talk, responsiveness, handling and feel. It's all about performance. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to cover all the rapid bike module related sensors on the R9T, where they are, what each sensor's job is and how to lay out the wiring to successfully install a rapid bike module. After opening up the box, you'll find either an Evo or, in my case, a race module. Also, you may have decided to order the console. Once you get everything out of the box, the first thing to do is lay out all the cables on a table and identify each one by its tag's sensor name. So once you've got your rapid bike parts out of the box, you'll notice there's a massive grab bag wiring harness. It's got three main parts. The central part connects directly into your actual module, your rapid bike module, and it's got a couple of other auxiliary connectors off to the side, which you only actually need to pay attention to if you've got something like a quick shifter or you've got like a rapid bike race module like I've got here. The only one you really need to pay attention to other than the main connection is you'll need to connect the negative terminal to the negative side of the battery. And these allow you to connect to your, for example here, your O2 sensor on the right hand side. These cables enable you to place the rapid bike module, or as I like to call it, the brain, in between the OE DME brain and the mechanical parts of your bike, like the TPS sensor, fuel injector sensors, etc. Effectively, the module connectors are intercepting the incoming information normally controlled solely by your DME. This enables your rapid bike module to read the incoming signals and auto-tune by adjusting the outgoing signals to the engine. So now you can see, laid out before you, all the sensor connectors and the rapid bike harness. But where do you plug in all these connectors? Let's take a look, starting with the TPS sensor. This reads the throttle position sensor signal, or more precisely, the throttle valve or plate position. It ensures the appropriate amount of fuel is injected into the engine combustion chamber based on the current throttle position. The relayed information is also used in adjusting ignition timing to ensure that the spark plug doesn't ignite the mixture too early e.g. before the piston reaches TDC, nor too late. Next up we have the O2 sensor, which reads the O2 lambda sensor signal. It measures the amount of oxygen in the exhaust gases to assist in calculating the best AFR, or the air-fuel ratio. It's made up of a ceramic element coated with a layer of platinum and zirconium. When the exhaust gases pass over this element, a voltage is generated which is proportional to the amount of oxygen in the exhaust. This information is also used in adjusting ignition timing. But the O2 sensors on their own don't get anything moving, that is partly down to the crankshaft. Hence we have a crank sensor. This reads the crankshaft position signal. It detects the position and rotational speed of the crankshaft which converts up and down motion into rotational motion. This is detected via the changes in the magnetic field as the shaft rotates. This information is also used in adjusting ignition timing. But the crankshaft doesn't rotate without getting some fuel mixture injected into the cylinders. So we have to introduce the ignition sensor, the outcome of fuel ignition signal. The fuel injection sensor, also known as the fuel pressure sensor, is responsible for measuring the amount of fuel pressure. It determines the appropriate amount of fuel to inject into the engine. Now you may be wondering, well that's all good and fair, but what about air? Well there is naturally an air box sensor. This is not directly intercepted by the rapid bike module, but this sensor reads the air box temperature. Rapid bike only requires direct information from the previously mentioned sensors, hence why you won't find the rapid bike connector for the air box. If your module has other wires unused, such as CAN bus, auxiliary and USB connectors, don't worry, other connectors are for additional add-ons, such as the race console and shift assist, which you can plug in later when or if you decide to purchase them. For now, just leave their covers on to protect them. As a side note, you can hook up the Rapid Bike software via the additional USB cable to look at or even change the mapping tables, but that's best left to a professional tuner. Now all you need to do is wrap the existing wiring with harness tape and decide where you want to place the actual module. One easy option if you don't have a mobilizer installed is to place it inside the back ledge at the back of the fuel tank. If you have the race console, you also need to decide how you want to attach it where it's easily accessible. If you have the race module, to get the absolute best out of it, it's recommended that you get your bike dynoed with the module installed. The Evo module, on the other hand, doesn't have ignition timing and engine braking management, so it doesn't require dynoing. It's simply a straight plug and play module, which is what makes the Evo a great purchase for street riders. I hope this has clarified some things for you and helps you feel more confident with your own installation. If you're thinking of other performance improvements, then you might like to watch this video right here.